starting a new segment here with DSR. Um, we are coming to you live from the hospitality and the pit here in beautiful Pomona, California, where it is nice and sunny. My name is Ashley Keller, and I am the social media specialist here at Don Schumacher Racing. And joining me is Ron Kapp, driver of the Napa Auto Parts Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Funny Car. So, nice, good one. Know, got it. And got I it. am your social media apprentice. You are. I love having Ron taking pictures, warming up, all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun here. So, and that's kind of what the goal is for this um, segment that we're going to be bringing to you live-ish sometime. Um, each weekend is a crack. Nice. Um, we are hoping to do this each week where we are going to take fan questions starting Monday of race week. So this is your chance to get your question answered from any driver. We could have a crew member or a crew chief. It makes sense. Um, and just have a casual one-on-one -on -one chat. We're going to keep it to about 10 minutes or less, so that way you guys can go on your way. But we get to share our experience with you, and hopefully we get to see you at the track sometime this year. So. And thank you for all the questions you guys sent in. We it was uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, some of them are really really good that we can't answer, <laughs> and I thank you for those. Those were questions that I even had to think about. But uh, yeah. a lot of good interaction. I love getting on Twitter. I love when you guys talk to me about. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and, and all the questions. So thank you to you guys for making this so cool. And the cool part is, too, that we'll get to actually choose one fan's question each week um, that will win a prize. So we've got a cool Twin Glow prize pack that we've posted on social media. We will be giving one away each race weekend when we do one of these. Um, and we'll be in contact with you to get it to you. So it's pretty cool, um, courtesy of Pennzoil um, and our friends there. So it's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, I'll open it up with a couple questions that I have. So obviously, oh boy. yeah, here, good luck. Put you in the hot seat. This is Pennzoil Pit Talk. So it is. People, they want those. They want to know things that they don't hear on TV. They want right. good stuff. So right. is well, there, have you got a good one? Kind of. We're okay. going to actually address the uh, elephant in the room a little bit. Um, I had a lot of social media questions about this after the truck did catch on fire, unfortunately. Yep. I would love to report that our two, I do want to report that our two crew guys um, that were involved are A-OK. -okay. They are here, obviously working behind us, um, pretty hard to get everything ready to go. So, um, as you saw, Ron, if you watched the broadcast yesterday with an injury on Fox, was on track. So, just give us a little bit of an update, um, how things are going. Um, obviously, the guys, I'm sure, are really happy to be here and, and get things going, even though you guys didn't, unfortunately. Yeah, thank you again for those messages too. The um, the guys work so hard. Um, I got emotional in my interview last night when the car ran on Fox um, and made it down the track because I just felt so much. I felt like the weight was so much on our shoulders or mine just to get the car down the track because they worked so hard. But basically, the fire did burn up a lot of stuff in the trailer. It ruined both bodies, delaminated them. Uh, they had to take both cars, which they spent all winter long going completely through, and they were almost brand new, uh, and they had to go through them again. They, they sent a truck, which is Tony Schumacher's rig from last year is what I'm in now, in my lounge and Ron Tobler's, and they sent it out middle of the night to meet up with the burn-up trailer. They swapped everything out, just threw it in this trailer, drove to California, got to our team hotel out in Corona, and spent the last week in the parking lot, like old school drag racers yeah. did. Yeah. In the parking lot of the Air Suites. So now you know where our team stays. Yeah, you can go yeah. bug my guys. Yeah. But um, thank you to the Air Suites, by the way, for letting them work in the parking lot. Yeah, awesome. And basically they went through everything in the trailer. And uh, we're just very lucky that uh, it couldn't have, could have been a lot worse. Yeah. But uh, I brag about the Napa know-how with Ron Tolver and, and how he uh, he's so good at what he does. Uh, he takes a little pressure off me as a driver a lot of times, but um, I, I, I know that uh, I'm blessed to have the guys that I get to work with, and uh, I'm just happy to report. We went down the track last night, and we're hoping to do uh, a better job today and move ourselves up. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome, and obviously the response from our fans that we've had on social media, we do see those messages. And so we want to thank you for all of the support, um, all of the love that you guys have given us um, as a team, and especially Ron's team, because the guys um, are very appreciative all of that. So it's, it's really cool that you guys have, were able to reach out to us um, once the news was out. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, Napa has a fun special. I just want you to kind of plug that really quick. You know, a little commercial break. They have a lot of um, specials. You gotta, you gotta help me out here. February. Oh, uh, yeah. Batteries. Love the it's February. It's still winter. Back yep. home in Indiana. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the $20 special that Napa is doing for the month of February. Well, the cool thing is, is there, Napa is always 
coming up with great specials. And, and, and I, I put it out on my social media because, not because I want to seem like a commercial, because I, I want to share with my friends and my family, and I do. Uh, I just replaced all the batteries in my motor home. We hadn't had it out all winter long, and they went dead, and I went down and, and switched them out to Napa batteries, and man, it's just, uh, it's so, such a great company, first of all. And with stores across the country and the specials they come up with, it's been winter time. A lot of you back in the snow and the rain, I feel sorry for you. It's 72 degrees here in Pomona, California. Right neener, now. neener, neener. But uh, a battery is something you can take down, get tested, and uh, there's no better battery that you can buy. So um, we're just very happy we get to run a battery's car again this year. And it's neat when Napa takes our team as well as Chase Elliott, my teammate in NASCAR, and uses us to help remind people uh, these great specials. So. Um, Look for the Napa batteries car later in the year, but go out, make sure you get yours checked, and make sure you buy the best, which is Napa battery. Yep. So, um, kind of a little bit switching gears to, um, so obviously fans get to follow you along on social media and do a fantastic job with that. Um, you share your life, you share all your fun things, that kind of thing. Was the off season too long for you, and <laughs> what all did you do in the off season? Um, you know, kind of recap what we got to see on social media. You obviously just got to go to the Super Bowl. I, exactly the way you it, but, I don't have a, there is no off season. I really don't. And it's, it's <laughs> right. not a bad thing. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I, I approach my job every morning. I'm a race car driver and I've been that for 26 years, but I consider myself a Napa employee. I act like I am the local delivery Napa guy in a sense. And so I'm always trying to make my, how to be better at what I do. Um, part of this stuff is fun. I get to go to Hawaii every October yeah. and share a lot of our Napa drag racing stuff with all the Hawaiians and we bounce around the islands. I get to do a CAPS, cruising with CAPS every December. Uh, those of you that have been on it, you know it's a blast. It's a small group from 40 to 60 people and we have a great time. 16th annual, I believe, coming up this year. Wow. Photo shoots, commercials, all the stuff we do in the winter time, uh, that is the off season. And I'm probably busier, believe it or not, in the off season than I am uh, during the season. So. To answer your question, it usually it, by January-ish, mid-January, I'm starting to get the itch. This year, I, I really I, need, I needed a couple more weeks, yeah. and then all of a sudden, this last week uh, before testing was going to happen, I was getting that bug again. Yeah. There is nothing in the in the universe. I say the planet Earth, but there is nothing more wild and crazy than a nitro funny car. No. One thing with more G-forces than a nitro funny car, and that's a fighter pilot. We, we go through more G-forces than the space shuttle pilots. So when you step on the gas after being out of a car for three months, like a nitro funny car, it's incredible. So um, I always get that itch when we start working out. I'm blessed to be able to do it for a living, but um, I, I was ready a week ago. And then unfortunately we had the fire, and then my first time stepping on the gas was in front of a huge crowd here at Pomona. So there's a little more pressure, yeah, yesterday. So um, yeah, the off season was great. It's always great. The years are flying by. My kids are getting older. It just seems like time doesn't stop for us. It right. just, next thing you know, we're in Gainesville. And then next thing you know, we're in Indy, right? Yep, yep. So. The season last year was completely by. I mean, obviously it was my first with DSR and first with NHRA, but by the time we got to Pomona too, I'm like, where did, where did 2019 yep. go? So, and it's honestly the way the off season is meant too. And it's not just for you, but it's the, the same for us back at the shop. You know, we kind of show what off season because we're decaling semis. We are decaling cars. We are getting everything ready and getting things hammered out to where, you know, we get everybody on the road. There's a lot that goes into it. So, yeah. yeah, we're all busy in the off season. So, I guess switching back gears to 2020, um, yesterday was your first, again, day on track of the year. Um, but getting back to business, so where 2019 saw you finish with three wins. You had one runner up, two number one qualifiers. Are there any events that you want redemption for from 2019? And kind of what are you looking forward to with your goal in 2020? Obviously, the championship in mind is, is your deal. That's a great question. But is, that, is that somebody's question? Or is that yours? Is it? Come on. We're getting ready to get into the, the, the stand okay. question. So stand by. Bye. That is a great question because I'll tell you, we look back every year, either mentally or we sit down over a glass of wine, Tova and I, and we talk about the season and what could have happened, what should have happened. 2016 was great. We talked about what that one weekend was, that pivotal race that really might have won us the championship. Last year, Dallas, I really feel like, was the one that cost us the championship. And Tober will tell you the same thing. Things were great. We were in the hunt. We had a great race car. We set the speed 
uh, uh, track record in Maple Grove, second fastest speed at 339, number one qualifier. Then we go to Dallas and we were great in qualifying until we had issues with the clutch and he was fighting to find what the problem was. And we went from really feeling good about, at the time, our teammate Jack Beckman, we had a lineup with him. He was ahead of us in points. We felt like that was a big matchup that time of the year. And we didn't take advantage of it. We lost to them. And our car kind of stumbled. So that, to me, was, and that's why it's a great question, that was the one race that I bet you wouldn't ask Ron Tober or a crew guy, they would tell you it was a Dallas race. So, you know, that you learn from them. You try. It's heartbreaking. You're in the middle of trying to win a championship, and it's all you do your whole lifetime is try to do that and when it comes apart like that it's hard it's hard to deal with so we're going to try to fix that again next year so let's go and switch to fan questions um we got several great ones um this week and it was actually a really tough choice to kind of filter through with several of them but the first one um was actually one of the first ones that came in Corey morgan from facebook asked what got you interested in racing uh well i i wasn't that i got interested i was born into it my yeah. dad raced when i was a kid Grew up in San Luis Obispo, California on the coast, right up the coast, three or four hours. There was a track in Santa Maria. Uh, my dad was kind of a local guy that everybody went to, you know, to, to, to get their cars to go faster. And uh, so I was blessed, my brother and I, to go to the track every weekend. Um, so there were a lot of baseball games, football games missed when we were kids because we'd rather go to the track and hang out with our dad. When he sold his race car, we started going out with my dad to help other people. So it was really, I was born into it. It was one of those things where I, I, I can't remember not being at the drag strip. And every every race weekend was either at that track or Bakersfield Fuel and Gas Championships, which yeah. is now the March meet, or yeah. Fremont, or Orange County. And you so, still go to the March meet. So I, now my dad can live vicariously through me because he never did it for a living. Yeah. And it's I never in a million years thought I'd be driving for the legendary Don Schumacher um, doing this. and. Uh, so I, you know, I, I necessarily, you look back and I, I don't remember a weekend we weren't doing that. So um, I never had a choice, but it was good that I never had a choice. Yeah. So switching kind of to the topic, or not really a topic, but our sponsor here, Pennzoil, of, of what we're doing here. But Dan McCoy from Facebook asked a great question. Um, and it kind of talks about the science behind, or you're able to talk about the science behind the Pennzoil if you use it in cars. But his question was, does the engine use an off-the-shelf oil, or is it a specific viscosity? Uh, designed for the extremes, the engine seats. Well, I, we get, I get asked that a lot. And the oil that we use is especially formulated. You know, you see, you see these commercials, and I've posted videos of me and some of the scientists, the really scientists yeah. from Penn's Oil, that come out and take samples. The reason you hear me brag, and I don't mean to sound cliche or sound like a commercial, is there is a legitimate reason when I say that when we put an oil through the test of a nitro funny car or dragster, what nitro methane and what that 11,000 horsepower does to oil is like nothing else on the planet. So there is nothing that puts it under duress like what we do. So that's why I always say, hey, if it's good enough for my race car, trust me, it's good enough for your car at home. It's a synthetic oil, it's a 70 weight, uh, specially formulated. We're not sure we could run something off the shelf but what happens is these scientists, they learn so much. And the first year we came out, uh, they were blown away by how much they learned by helping formulate oil to go through this. It helped them creating the synthetic that you could buy on the shelves. Oh, wow. So it's not something I made up. When I say, hey, it's good enough for this race car, it's good enough for my cars at home. And I tell my mom, I tell my aunt, I tell family members I care about because that's how I feel. And when I go down to get my oil changed, if I don't see a pins oil sign or my mom or somebody, we'll go down the road again. But we take our oil if we have to and, and bring our own, go to Napa Auto Parts, buy it, take it down, and get a change at the dealership. So um, we bought a, a Chrysler and a Dodge, and so when we go to the dealer to get a change, I take my own oil. Nice. And that's where it's kind of cool because we can really showcase the proof is in the pins oil. I get a discount too yeah. on it. Well, you know, but <laughs> it, it works. Um, and, and, a, and a coffee mug. One last question, um, cause we've got to wrap this up. We got to get going. But um, if you could race, actually at JC or well JC Haynes on Twitter, sorry, asks if you could race any NHRA engine, who would it be and who would win? Oh my gosh. Um, Good question. I, you know, I drove for Don Perdome for almost ten years. Uh, I think it would have been cool to line up with him back when he drove the Army car. That was probably one of the most lethal race cars 
in the history of Funny Car. So I would have loved to have lined up with him back in the day and just say that I lined up. Who would win? I'd be remiss if I didn't have the confidence in myself to say I would have a chance, but um, I would be dumb also to think in my head that I would have a him. shot. I would go yeah. and do everything I could to leave on him, but back in those days, Don Schumacher, Don Perdome, those guys lived and breathed it. They worked on them, they built them, and they drove them. So that's why I always joke that I think I was born 20 years too late. I think I would have loved that time period of running around the country with Don Schumacher and Perdome and Garlitz and racing on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday nights, um, you know, living out of your trailer. Yep. As, as bad as that like it might have been, I think it would have been the coolest thing ever. So I, I would have- 24 of these and they did how many a year? Yeah, way more. And when they say they have so many NHRA wins, they probably had triple that in match race wins and other, other wins. So. I'd have to say Don Perdome, uh, back in the Army days, would probably be the car I would have lined up That's with. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. It gives so, me shivers right now thinking Yeah, I know. I do, too. I mean, because I always love the old school part of racing. Like, I, yeah. I, you and I both watch sprint car racing. I love the old school USAC stuff when Hoyt and Andretti were still running around. They yeah. the fairgrounds and yeah, all that stuff. Me growing up in Indiana. So, like, those are really cool times and really formative times of our sport. So, yeah. um, on that note, we do have to wrap it up. Ron's got to get some autographs done, and then he's got to get in the race car uh, for Q3 and Q3.